Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we are going to be talking with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. But we're going to do it in a special format. So I have received some wonderful questions that we should ask Freddie Mercury from a very special viewer. These questions were sent to me by Jaden. Hi, Jaden and his mom. Jaden loves the Freddie Mercury videos. So he sent some very good questions that I think all of you who are Freddie Mercury fans will appreciate me asking. So thanks, Jaden, for the questions. And let's bring in Freddie Mercury and the afterlife. Hello, Mr. Mercury, come on in. It's so funny, you guys. <laughs> He has a swagger about him. He's so funny. He's all in white, you know, like white t-shirt, white pants, you know, um, everything's tight fitting. He's so funny. And then all of a sudden he turns around and then he like has a, <laughs> I'm clairvoyant. So I like to describe it's part of the experience. At Above Life Channel, the channeling isn't just about the words and the facts and the info. It's about the feeling and the vibes. So he turns around and all of a sudden he has like a white long, like a tux coat and uh, white pants, like a suit. He has a white suit on, but it's not super fitted. It's like longer and a little more conservative. I'm like, okay, you can, Freddie, you can dress however you want. Oh, and then he has a big red flower. You guys, when I connect with Freddie Mercury, red is his color, like red, like big red, like, like big red roses kind of vibe. That's what his energy is like, okay? That's how he looks to me. He's got a big red, I can't quite tell if it's a, is it like an orchid, like a stargazer lily? I can't quite tell. I'm going to, it's not a rose. It's a different color of beautiful flower. And it's right on lapel. And it's a, such a contrast between the white of his suit and the flower. And you guys, sometimes you guys ask me, why do you talk about what they wear? Because I'm clairvoyant. I see. So there you go. Now you get to see it and feel the energy of that. So the contrast of the colors is awesome. That's really beautiful. So the red is a grounded color. It helps connect us with our human life, implement any of the energy or information that comes through the channeling. And with the white, the balance of the white energy, that is really like a blank canvas kind of an energy. Like you create what it is that you want to create. You take this and you make it what you want to make it for your life. That's that's what that means when I connect with that, okay? All right, nice to see you. No cats, okay, and then instantly two cats. One kind of looks Siamese. I don't know that I've seen her before. And then, um, oh no, there's a boy cat and a girl cat. And so then there's that big white fluffy one that I always see with a little bit of gray on it. I always see that one. And then, but then I see a Siamese one, which is interesting. Um, I think it might be an end name actually for one of the cats. I don't know. Anyway, all right. Hi, <laughs> nice to see you. He says, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. I'm happy to help out, he says. <laughs> I'm happy to help out. Yeah, he says, I understand I have a fan, a young fan. Yes, yes you do. I'm sure you have many, many that are inspired by your connection. So he says, well, let's get to it. Okay, so here are the questions that we have for you. Oh, this is, I'm just gonna go right down the list of what he has, but I'm, so they're not in a particular order. Okay, just how they were submitted. This one's emotional. I'm gonna say that right away. Are you ready for it? Are you ready, Freddie? At the end of These Are the Days of Our Lives music video, Freddie looks up at the camera and whispers, I still love you. Was this his goodbye to his fans? Was this your goodbye to us? He kind of looks down and goes, it sort of worked out that way, didn't it? it? Sort of worked out that way. He says, but no, to answer the question, no, I wasn't intending to, uh, to be leaving you so soon after. It was not my intention to leave. But I am grateful for the opportunity. Like posthumously, you guys, it kind of feels like, yes, it was a goodbye. It was a beautiful, it's a beautiful healing. So many people 
hold on to that, that moment. And, and I have watched that video myself and felt it so much that it was like your soul or your spirit knew. Well, of course, he says, well, of course I knew that I would be leaving the earth. I knew that my life was not without end. I didn't realize it would be quite so soon. I thought I had a bit more time to, to um, record and share, but I'm glad, I'm grateful for that moment. For so many, you know, that he says, you know, the healing is something that is something you learn about so much as you are going through the end, the end of your life. And for me, um, the healing is such a, such a gift. So many come to love you and take care of you. And those of you who are closest to you get to know you so privately, things that you would never want anyone to have to see or deal with. People you love and trust. Even those people closest to you, just it, it's so, you have to really um, recognize that, that the healing is really a great, a great gift. So do you mean healing the body or healing the soul or the heart or what do you mean when you say that? There are many aspects, aren't there? There are many parts to that. It feels as though there is a relationship, a very important one within ourselves that I, I always felt strong in myself, not really knowing who I am and yet um, also feeling a sort of sadness um, a disappointment of not being able to, um, of not wanting to hurt others and still doing that. And so you guys, when I'm connecting with Freddie, I really feel him. So he communicates through clairsentient channel, which is empathy or feelings, emotions, sensory energy. This is the exchange channel that you can connect with Freddie also. This is his primary channel, you guys. So I just, I'm feeling. He's sharing, uh, I wanna be really clear, I wanna clarify something. He's not disappointed in his life or himself at all. He's very, very connected to who he is, the purpose of his, his, his human existence. Um, he doesn't feel his purpose was to die of AIDS or to die tragically or to die as he did in the way that he did, but he accepts the outcome. He doesn't feel like it was a punishment. He feels like it's an example of how life is a gift and how life is short. That's the energy of what I feel. Is that accurate? He says, talk about the healing as the healing part of things. Okay. So you, t so then help me to feel this then Freddie, the healing part. There is something that you leave on the earth behind the, it's not, it's not simply the imprint of the proof of your existence. He says, it's not simply the proof of your existence. He says it's, it's, it's much deeper than that. And knowing now what I didn't fully understand as a person. And I don't know if you can fully understand this as a person. He's sharing that with me. He says, I don't know if you can fully understand this as a person, Bridget. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's possible. I'd like, I, Freddie, I would like to think it is because I feel all this that you're sharing with, but that the healing isn't a, that moment that you refer to in the song, particularly the video, the visual, you can see I'm not well in my body, but my heart is very much well. And that's where the healing, that's where the healing exists in the heart. That is something that we, we begin to know in parts of our lives and our relationships, but we never really, I don't, I don't know if, if it is, it wasn't possible for me to really fully understand that until I 
I made the transition. And then I could really understand and accept the freedom that comes from just the pure love, no judgment from others or yourself or anything. It's just a pure loving existence. And I would love, I would love for you to know love, like the real love. That word healing is, is simply a way of describing in part that in the heart. That's where it exists. Healing exists in the heart. Well, okay, everybody, anybody else need a breath? Let's take a breath. It's a lot. Like, I literally felt like he just cleared something at the base of the heart. When I look at you guys, when I look at energy, and I can see, like, at the base of the heart chakra, literally, like, what looks like a funnel almost, and literally it just went and released. Almost like what you would see as an hourglass or, or passing of time. I just see it go out but it's not gone perfect Freddie that's a perfect image here's an image for you all the hourglass think of that in the energy of that heart space the top of the hourglass is the heart living and experiencing energy and life and the bottom half of it is the soul that collects all the experiences and holds it so the sand rests it grounds and centers at the soul Think of it that way. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. And I don't know who gets credit for that. You or me. How about a partnership? How about a collaborative? Okay. I want to utilize that. That is a beautiful imagery, you guys. Wow. Thank you, Freddie. Wow. See how this connection works, you guys? So cool. All right. That was only the first question, and we've talked a lot. <laughs> let's keep going. There's more questions. All right. Let's see. Let me. I, can, I don't think I can get to all of these. There's a lot of them. Let's see. Um... Oh, let's ask another question about a song. Is there a deeper meaning to the song, The Show Must Go On? He says, it means whatever you want it to mean. It means whatever it means to you. And he says, it's about life. Yes, if that's what you're asking. It's about life and understanding life. He says, it's a, a bit of a metaphor, yes. But it is not a prelude or a premonition to my death. It's not a prediction of my death. It's not because of the ending of my life. It is much more a metaphor for life. And it means whatever it means to you. That's what it means. He says, that's how all music is. And it does speak to the heart. And when it speaks to the heart, then you know what's there. After the first question, you know what's there. And that's the healing, right? Yes, the opportunity for healing. Good, awesome, okay. All right, so let's see. Oh, so what happened to you about um, when you were, because you were unable to finish um, the song, I guess, I guess, I don't know this myself, but um, so Jaden asks about what happened to you that you were unable to finish the song Mother Love. What was happening? He's saying, um, so you guys, when I ask this, I had a question about mother love and why he wasn't able to finish it, what was happening? He makes me feel, he literally, I start feeling the song, like I'm in a studio and he's trying to record something, and I feel like he's, all of a sudden the song that comes over instead of him singing it is, there's no time for us, there's no place for us. I don't know what song that's from. It's like I can hear it. I should know the song. I can't. I can't even get the big words. He could just keep singing it. There's no time for us. There's no place for us. And then he goes, "Oh, who wants to live forever?" And then he goes, "Wants." And I can feel the vibrato on my throat chakra just leave. like I can feel it you guys I'm not gonna sing I'm not a singer that's not my jam <laughs> that's not my purpose but he's like it's shaking the throat chakra so he starts singing that who wants to live forever to respond to the question about why he was unable to finish the song mother love so 
is the response in the song. You have to choose. You have to choose. He says it's he said he doesn't like to talk about his disease or the illness because it just decayed his body. He's like, my body died and my soul was still alive. Like it was not, you guys, it's not pleasant. I know we know that. I don't say that to hurt anyone who loves him, but he doesn't like to focus on that. He doesn't like to focus on the suffering of it because he it did. It was very, he's telling me, it was very painful. And there were moments of just pure stillness and quiet that interrupted the pain. I don't tell you, again, you guys, we don't tell you this to be to make you sad. And he doesn't like to talk about it because it's not part of the legacy of how he wants to remember. He doesn't want to be the poster boy for dying horrifically because of AIDS. He doesn't want that. And he didn't want that as a person. And now in the afterlife, are you connected to that? I don't, he says, I don't want to connect with the suffering. He doesn't want to connect to the suffering. He doesn't want to bring through energy of suffering because there's so many empaths that are watching. He says, there's so many sensitive people that are watching. If they feel the energy of that. They're going to be sad to that. But the healing part comes, he says, the healing portion comes in here, right here. You focus on what you can do. You don't get depressed in what you can't. You do what you can, and you have to forgive yourself the time to not do things that you cannot simply do things. It's not because of, um, it's just simply that other things were more of a, of a, of a, it wasn't because I didn't want to. It just felt like that wasn't for me to complete. And I think it's much more meaningful that it wasn't me, that that it was, he's making me feel like it was eventually completed, that the song was eventually written or completed or adjusted or changed in some way or remastered or remade or something. But he's making me feel like somebody else finished it for him and that was a way that that person could heal or that those people could heal is to finish writing the song or to to take it and, and utilize the energy of it and put it into a new song. That's what he's making me feel like it's a healing for them. So it was, he's making me feel like it's not something that was necessarily left undone, but it was something that um, he made the decision not to do and focus on something with a bigger purpose or a better purpose, more in alignment is how I'm going to use it. He doesn't use the word alignment. He rarely uses that kind of stuff, words, but that's more, um, fitting for what he needed to be doing at the time is what he's making me feel like. He says there's a lot. There's a lot of songs and things that that speak to healing. If you go, if you listen, there's many songs he says that speaks to healing. I didn't, I don't, I can't say that I knew that when I was making them though can't say that I knew that it was for myself and sometimes for others when someone else wrote a song I could just feel that energy of that and whether it's a you know like a rock song or a ballad or whatever it may be whatever the tone or the rhythm or the paces of the music there's always some purpose in it there's always some purpose even if it's lighthearted and to have fun or to heal from suffering it's there's always a purpose I think for any, do you think for any artist, is that true? I mean, anyone that is connected to their spirit while they're creating their music, and that's most, most artists are, most musicians are, are that. He said, you would say a channel. Most musicians are a channel, so they are connected. And so because of that, yes, there is meaning in the music. And sometimes it comes in the lyrics, and other times it comes through the, the rhythm of things and the arrangement of things. That's a good question. Yes, he says yes. Very insightful. Yes. All right. So let's see. Huh. How did the song Bohemian Rhapsody come about? That was a huge thing because of the movie. So how did the song Bohemian Rhapsody come about? He says it's a bunch 
It's a bunch of different things all mixed together, put together and like a, like a show. And it was sort of a, almost like a play that um, was laid out in my mind, in my head. And there were different pieces of things that, that I was interested in and that inspired me. And it wasn't how it was in the movie. He's going to say it's not how it was in the movie. So it, all the stuff in the movie was, you know, it's embellished and it's there's creative story and it's based on a true story, but it's not like so how it unfolded isn't how it unfolded exactly in the movie. You know, it's not the same. But so he's making me feel like there it was a collaboration. There were others. It wasn't just him, this big mastermind behind. He's like everyone, everyone got involved in, you know, moving things around and changing things and reassembling things. And he says, um, <clears throat> it's art. It's art. It's very artistic. It's very art. He says, he's saying to me, it's very Bowie, don't you think? It's very Bowie. How we would see Bowie now, you know, looking back over his um, performances and things like that. It's kind of like that. But he's like making it very clear. I was not, I'm not suggesting that I influenced him or that he influenced me. I'm not suggesting that. There's not a connection there except for he says, to me, it's very Bowie-like. And he says, um, you know, it's it's public knowledge that he loved opera. Everybody knows that. He says, so you know that I loved playing with my voice and challenging the the what is considered, you know, the definition of a rock band and um, any kind of not labels, but he's saying any kind of um, boundaries or edges. I want to go right to the edge and see what else is out there because that means it's new, it's different, and and anything to excite people, get people excited and and feeling really connected with the music. So it doesn't seem as though it makes sense. He says it's nonsensical, and yet it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant, and so you must be in a place and a state where you can appreciate that. And as I mentioned, as I mentioned previous, the meaning is in what it means for you. So, all right. So you're saying, Freddie, that it was more of a collaboration and you had all these ideas and now like, what would happen if we did this? That's kind of what I'm getting from you. Is that true? Yes. He's like, yes, <laughs> you got it. You got it. He says, so then he picks up a cat and he's petting a cat. Um, so let's see. There's more. Let me just check my time. Oh, I'm getting really too long here. Now let's ask one more question. How do you feel about Queen, the band, being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and about you being a huge legend in music? How do you feel about that? He's saying, as it would be expected. Wouldn't you expect that? Wouldn't you expect to achieve your dreams in your life? Not that I expect it to be in any kind of recognition or reward, and there's appreciation for that. Um, it's nice. He says, it's nice, but it's not necessary. It's not necessary, but it's nice, he says. Um, so how do you feel about being a legend in music? And he says, um, there are there are many ways, there are a few ways I can respond to that. He says, what do you think, Bridget? How should I respond? As a person or as a spirit? Well, let's do both. As a person, how would you, how do you feel about that? Being a legend in music, like if you knew, did you know that you were a legend? He says, maybe legendary. There's a difference, isn't there? Yeah. Um, he says, it makes me sound rather old. Um, however, I suppose I could be considered old. <laughs> He's like, you know how that feels, don't you? <laughs> like to me, I'm like, thanks. <laughs> so as a person, how do you feel about being a, legacy, or a legend? Did you feel like you were a legend? Did you realize that? Yeah, I think it would take a moment to stop and actually reflect and contemplate. But I... There's not really a time that I did that. I didn't really look at my life or my career and think I'm a legend. He says, I didn't really think that. I, 
I say? I lived my life on purpose. I performed, I created, I left a can't sense the word, like a bunch of stuff for everyone to enjoy for years to come. I left my mark, sort of, but he's not saying my mark. I left my, um, it's almost like, you guys, you know how they say, like, leave everything on the court or leave everything on the stage for performers or, like, sports people. Leave everything on the court kind of thing. Um, or leave it all in the field, like, doing your best. Like, he's making me feel like he did his best. He did the best he could. And there was never really a moment where he says, I'm a legend, you know, and other people recognize you as that or they call you that or you get reward uh, awards and things and recognition. And he says, but but it wasn't really about that. The recognition comes from the fans. He says from the fans, the recognition is is doing a performance and, and hearing them sing your songs with you. There are songs, the fans and the band. It's our songs. And so it's everyone's. So if there's a, a legend, it's all of us. It's it's because of all of us. It's not one person. It's not just the band. It's not just me. It's not. It's the fans that create that 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 legacy and carry it on by listening to the music and and by being part of the experience. And he says, for me, the recognition comes from the performance and the feeding off the energy of the crowd. And he's saying, singing back the songs. That's Thing, singing back when you sing back his songs you guys the queen songs that's where he lives he loves it because you've received that energy of the gift of him being his full self and then encourages you to be your full self i mean this is beautiful this is amazing okay so i have to tell you too freddie that Jaden wants to make sure that i you know how how to pronounce his name I'm supposed to tell you that you pronounce it J A. It's spelled J A Y dash D E N. Jaden. It's not spelled that way, but that's how you'd say it. So J J A Y dash D E N. And he says hi. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel, and we have been talking with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. Thank you so much for um, Jaden, our fan of Freddie Mercury. And his mom, Jessica, thank you for sending the questions. That was lovely. And for everyone else, I hope you've enjoyed this channeling. I'm looking forward to actually watching it back again. As always, I hope you've inspired your spirit, filled you with hope. Remember, this is your life. So live it. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great day.